Hello, my dear viewers. Welcome back to our academic journey here on YouTube. I welcome you to an exploration of one of the most captivating and fundamental topics in human history, Africa and the origin of humanity. In this episode, we will delve into the rich tapestry of evidence that supports the hypothesis that Africa is the birthplace of our species, Homo sapiens. This hypothesis, often referred to as the out of Africa theory, posits that modern humans originated and evolved in Africa before dispersing to other parts of the world. Our journey will take us through various pieces of evidence, each offering unique insights into our evolutionary past and reinforcing the idea of Africa as a cradle of humanity. These pieces of evidence encompasses discoveries from fossil remains, archaeological sites, genetic studies, and cultural artifacts, collectively painting a vivid picture of our very origins. For decades, scientists, archaeologists, geneticists, and anthropologists have pieced together a mosaic of clues that paint a vivid picture of our evolutionary roots on the African continent. In this particular episode, we delve into the world of evidence that bolsters the theory of Africa as the birthplace of Homo sapiens and the epicenter of human evolution. From fossil discoveries to genetic studies and archaeological findings, each piece of evidence adds another layer of understanding to our shared ancestral story. I crave your indulgence to stay a little longer on a quest to uncover the compelling pieces of evidence that support Africa as a birthplace of humanity. Join us on this fascinating journey as we unravel the mysteries of our origins and celebrate the diversity and resilience of the human species rooted in the African continent. My name is Didi Okansi Jr. I am a senior member of the Department of Philosophy and Classics, University of Ghana. I am not just an academic. I am a passionate explorer of the classical world, a forward-thinking educator, and a catalyst for change in the realm of classical studies. With an unwavering commitment to my vision, I bring the wisdom of the Greco-Roman civilizations into the modern era, igniting curiosity and challenging conventional thinking. But most importantly, I am your guide on this fascinating adventure and I couldn't be more elated to have you all here on this channel. Today, I am happy to introduce you to this episode of the lecture series that will take you on an unforgettable journey through time. Welcome to the civilizations of the ancient world. Now, I know you might be thinking, why should I be excited about ancient civilization? Well, fasten your seatbelt, because this episode is more than just a stroll down memory lane. 
It's a mind-blowing exploration of our roots, our stories, and the echoes of the past that shape our present. It is worth noting that the main source material for this episode is from the book entitled Ancient Civilization, published by Kofiaka in 2010. The question of where humans originated from has long been a captivating puzzle in the annals of human history. Across decades of research and discovery, the answer to this fundamental question has shifted at times pointing to one co continent and then pivoting to another. This ever-evolving narrative reflects the dynamic nature of our quest to unravel the mysteries of human origins and the complex interplay of evidence, theory, and interpretations. Join me on this captivating journey through the shifting landscapes of human origins, where continents become stages for the unfolding drama of our evolutionary past. From Africa's prominence as a cradle of humanity to debates surrounding alternative theories, each shift in perspective offers new insight and challenges, old assumptions, driving us closer to a comprehensive understanding of our shared ancestral heritage. As we navigate this dynamic terrain, we will explore the diverse pieces of evidence, scientific breakthrough, and interdisciplinary perspectives that have shaped and reshaped our understanding of human origins. From fossil discoveries to genetic analysis, archaeological findings to environmental context, each revelation adds another layer to the complex tapestry of our evolutionary journey. Join the conversation as we delve into the intriguing question, where did humans originate from? Buckle up for a journey through time, a journey through continent, a journey through discoveries as we embark on a quest to uncover the ever-shifting truth behind our origins as a species. I am hoping that by the end of this particular episode or lecture series, you would be able to, one, trace the evolutionary journey from ancient primates to modern humans. Two, investigate fossil evidence and genetic similarities supporting the African origin of humanity. Three, explore the distinctive features that differentiate humans from other primates. Four, analyze the migration patterns of early human ancestors and their impact on genetic diversity. And five, you should be able to examine the cultural and technological advancement of the early human species. Understanding human evolution is like piecing together a complex puzzle. Each fossil discovery adds a new fragment revealing a bit more about our journey from ancient primates to modern humans. Thus, to enable me provide a compelling argument 
on Africa and the origin of humanity. Our subject matter for this particular episode, I will adapt the following methodology. I will first of all look at the discovery and its context. Understanding where and when the fossil was discovered helps us establish its geological and environmental context in Africa. This context is crucial because Africa is widely accepted as the birthplace of humanity due to the abundance of fossil evidence and the geological history of the continent. The discovery's location within Africa will strengthen our argument for an African origin of humanity by providing a physical link to the continent's evolutionary history. I also look at the physical characteristics of the discovery. Analyzing the physical attributes of the fossil, such as cranial morphology, dental features, can reveal evolutionary adaptation and similarities to other African hominin species. The shared physical characteristics with known African hominins will support the idea of a common evolutionary lineage originating in Africa. I would also, I also look at the taxonomic classification. The taxonomic classification based on physical characteristics can place the fossil within a specific hominin group known to have originated or evolved primarily in Africa. If the discovery is classified as belonging to an African hominin species or a closely related ancestor, it would strengthen the case for an African origin of humanity. When I pick the fossil discovery, I'll look at the cultural and behavioral aspects. Evidence of cultural practices, tool use, social organizations, or sim symbolic behavior associated with the fossil can provide insights into early human behaviors. The cultural and behavioral similarities with other African hominins will suggest continuity and development within African population in order to support an African origin narrative. I also look at the significance of that particular discovery in human evolution. The fossil significance in human evolution will be evaluated based on its age, evolutionary adaptation and position within the hominin evolutionary tree. If the fossil represents a key transitional stage or exhibits unique traits shared with African hominins, then it would reinforce Africa's role as a cradle of human evolution. Finally, I'll be looking at the legacy and impact of each fossil discovery. The legacy and impact of the discovery on, uh, in, our, in understanding the human evolution cannot be swept under the carpet. Discoveries with a profound legacy often highlight Africa's rich fossil record, diverse hominin species, and ongoing contributions to our understanding of human origins. By systematically analyzing each aspect of my roadmap, we will be able to build a compelling case for the African origin of humanity by showcasing the world of evidence, continuity, and evolutionary development found within African continent fossil record. But I would also like to add that our, this particular presentation 
will not be an exhaustive analysis of all the fossils that have been discovered in relation to this particular subject matter. I'll just be paying attention to the notable ones in order to make my case. I would like to begin this whole conversation by looking at the Asian fossil discoveries. I'll begin with Java Man. Java Man refers to a collection of fossils discovered in the late 19th and early 20th century on the Indonesian island of Java. The most famous specimen is known as Trinel 2 or Java Man, discovered by Eugene Du Bois in 1891. The discovery took place in the Trinel site along the Solo River where Du Bois unearthed a skull cap, a thigh bone, and a molar tooth, all belonging to early hominins. In terms of physical characteristics, Java man exhibits a combination of ape-like and human-like traits. The skull cap, for example, shows a small brain size compared to modern humans, but larger than that of apes. The brow ridges are prominent and the cranial capacity is estimated to be around 900 cubic centimeters. The thigh bone, on the other hand, which is also known as the femur, suggests bipedal locomotion, a key characteristic of hominins. In terms of its taxonomic classification, the Java man was initially classified as Pithecanthropus erectus and later renamed Homo erectus. Java man represents an early hominin species believed to have lived approximately 1.8 million years ago. Its taxonomic classification places it as an intermediate species between Australopithecus and Homo sapiens, showcasing some form of evolutionary development towards modern humans. In terms of cultural and behavioral aspect, the Java man is associated to have included the use of rudimentary tool, stone tools as evidenced by artifacts found near the fossils. This indicates early tool making capabilities and suggests a level of cultural complexity and adaptation to the environment. It is worth noting that the significance of the Java man discovery in human evolution cannot be overemphasized. Java man holds a significant importance in human evolution as one of the earliest human hominid to display bipedal locomotion and the use of tools. Its existence provides crucial insight into the transition from ape-like ancestors to Homo genus and the spread of early humans beyond Africa. The legacy and impact of the Java man helps us to understand the human evolution. In fact, it contributed to the rec recognition of Asia as a crucial region for early human migrations and adaptations. Java man's legacy includes shaping scientific inquiry into our evolutionary past and sparkling further research into the origins of Homo erectus and its descendants. The next Asian discovery that my presentation will focus on is Peking Man. Peking Man is also known as Homo erectus pekinensis and it refers to a collection of fossil remains discovered around Beijing in China around the period 1920 
1930. The discovery site, also known as the Zakudian Cave, yielded numerous fossils, tools, and cultural artifacts dating back to approximately 750,000 years ago. The excavation was led by archaeologist and paleoanthropologist Davidson Black and his team. In terms of physical characteristics, Peking man exhibits typical Homo erectus features, including a large bro ridge, thick cranial bones, a sloping forehead, and a robust skull with a cranial capacity averaging around 1,000 cubic centimeters. The fossil also shows adaptations of bipedalism, such as a broad pelvis, a lower limb proportion situated for walking upright. In terms of taxonomic classification, the, Java, the Pekin man is classified as Homo erectus pekinensis. Pekin man represents an earlier hominin species that tried in East Asia during the Pleistocene epoch. And this Pleistocene epoch is the same as the Ice Age. Its taxonomic classification places it within the Homo genus and showcases adaptations and anatomical features transitional between early hominins and modern humans. In terms of its cultural and behavioral aspects, the Peking man's cultural aspects are inferred from the tools and artifacts found around the site it was discovered. And these include stone tools, evidence of fire use, and animal remains with signs of butchery. These findings suggest a level of technological sophistication, social organization, and adaptation to the environment. In terms of significance in the human evolution, Peking man is significant in human evolution as it represents one of the earliest known populations of human Homo erectus outside Africa. The fossils and archaeological evidence at the site it was discovered provides insight into early hominin adaptation, migration patterns, tool-making abilities, and cultural practices during the Middle Pleistocene era or epoch. In terms of legacy and impact, Peking man's legacy has had a lasting impact on paleontology, on human evolution, on genetics, and even our quest to identify the origins of humanity. The discoveries in, during this particular period has contributed valuable information about the Homo erectus adaptation, about people around Asia, and the diversity of early human populations. It is worth noting that unfortunately the original fossils have been lost during the Second World War, highlighting the importance of ongoing research, conservation efforts, and the study of legacy collections and archival materials related to Peking Man. It is interesting to note that once upon a time in the history of humankind, Asia was once considered the origin of humanity due to several factors and hypotheses proposed by researchers and scientists. So what I'll be doing subsequently is to attempt to debunk the assertion that Asia was the origin of humanity. One of the main reasons that some of these scholars and researchers gave as basis to concluding that Asia was the origin of humanity was the hominin fossil discoveries, of which my earlier presentation have highlighted Java man and Peking man. 
These discoveries suggested that Asia could have been a significant area for human evolution and development of early human species. My counter argument to this particular argument that has been offered is that while early hominin fossils like Homo erectus have been found in Asia, more recent discoveries in Africa, such as those in the Rift Valley region, provide evidence of even earlier hominin species like Australopithecus afarensis. And these findings suggest that Africa was inhabited by hominins long before they migrated to other regions, including Asia. Another reason what that scholars have given as basis to conclude that Asia was the origin of humanity is the paleoanthropological uh, sites. Archaeological sites in Asia, such as the Hiniwan Basin in China and the Daminisi site in Georgia, have yielded important artifacts and hominin remains providing insight into early human activities and behaviors in that particular region. But my counter argument to this is that although Asia has important archaeological sites, the concentration of hominin fossils and the ancient human artifacts in Africa, particularly in regions like Ethiopia, Kenya, and even South Africa, indicates a longer and a more continuous human presence. And these sites have also revealed crucial stages of human evolution, such as the development of bipedalism and tool use, which are central to understanding human origins. Another argument that scholars have offered is the, com the cultural comple complexity of Asia. They allege that Asia has a rich and diverse cultural history with ancient civilizations like the Indus Valley Civilization, the Mesopotamian Civilization, and even the Yellow River Civilization. And these have contributed to advancement in agriculture, technology, and societal organization. The complexities of these ancient cultures have led some scholars to speculate about Asia's role in human origins. However, my counter argument to this claim is that while Asia has a rich cultural history, the archaeological record in Africa includes evidences of early symbolic behavior, such as the use of sim the use of archae and the symbolic burials dating back hundreds and thousands of years. These cultural practices suggest complex cognitive abilities and social behaviors among early African population, contributing to the argument for Africa being the cradle of humanity. The last but not the least argument that scholars have offered in support of Asia being the, or the origin of humanity is genetic diversity. Genetic studies have revealed significant genetic diversity among Asian population, indicating ancient genetic lineages and potential migration routes of early humans across Asia. My counter argument is that genetic studies have indeed revealed diversity among Asian populations. But genetic analysis of the mitochondrial DNA and the Y chromosome DNA consistently points to Africa as a source of modern human genetic diversity. The genetic divergence and migration patterns observed in Asian population can often be traced back to African ancestral populations. There's also an argument based on the geographical connectivity. And scholars allege that Asia's geographical features, such as the land bridges, 
the proximity to Africa suggest possible migration patterns for early humans to disperse and populate different regions of Asia and beyond. My counter argument, however, is that while Asia's geographical features may have facilitated human migration, genetical studies and fossil evidence indicate that early humans first evolved in Africa before dispersing to other continents. The presence of ancient hominin fossils and stone tools in Africa predate similar findings in Asia, supporting the idea of Africa as the starting point of human evolution. It is also interesting to note that there are some scholars who make cultural and linguistic diversity argument as the basis to concluding that Asia was the origin of humanity. They posit that the diversity of languages, cultures, and ethnic groups in Asia reflect millennia of human history and migration patterns. And this together gives us an idea of complex interactions and adaptations of early human populations in the Asian region. My counter argument is that the diversity of languages and cultures in Asia reflects historical migration and interaction, but does not necessarily indicate the origin of humanity. Linguistic and genetic studies often converge on Africa as the homeland of modern humans, with population movement and language diversification occurring later in history. So conclusively, while Asia has played a significant role in human history and cultural development, the, preponder the preponderance of evidence from paleontology, genetics, and archaeology strongly supports Africa as the primary center for human origins. Currently, Africa is widely recognized as the primary center for human origins based on extensive fossil evidence, genetic studies, and archaeological findings. My next focus will be on two interesting discoveries. They are the Greek and the Bulgarian discoveries. Together, they have come to be known as the Grycopithecus jawbone and upper primola. In 1944, German soldiers constructing a bunker in Greece discovered a fossilized lower jawbone whose teeth have mostly been chipped away, although the roots remain intact. Anthropologists classified it as belonging to the species Grycopithecus frebagi. Modern technology, a CT scan, has recently been used by researchers at the University of Tübingen in Germany to pair into the jawbone, and this has led to some interesting interpretation. One interpretation is that the jawbone is about 7.15 million years old, and that it has some human characteristics, and that it is the specimen of an it has the specimen of an ape from around the time the human and the ape species split from its common ancestor. The researchers also analyzed an upper primolar tooth from another primate and dated it at 7.2 million years old. And this discovery was made in Bulgaria. The authors of these new studies suggest that the loose tooth could have come from another member of the species Grycopithecus frebagi. A team of scientists has recently presented two studies 
on these two fossilized jawbone and upper prime molar and published this study in the journal PLAS One. They claim that the jawbone could represent the oldest known human ancestor and that humans diverged from apes in southern Europe rather than from eastern Africa. The scientists say that the environmental changes cause the human ape divergence. By using geological analysis to reconstruct the conditions from the Sahara to the Mediterranean, they claim that the desert could have spread far into southern Europe, creating a barrier between Africa and the locations where the Gracopithecines were found, so that the eastern Mediterranean could just have likely been the location of human age divergence. It is important to note that until these fossils were discovered, scientists believed that the hominin chimpanzee split occurred in Africa between 5 and 10 million years old. And I think in my subsequent discussion, I'll be debunking this particular claim on the Greek and the Bulgarian discoveries. In our quest to answer the question, where did humans originate from? My next discovery will focus on the German discovery. And this German discovery is known as the Steinheim skull. This skull was on earth in 1933, near Steinheim and in Germany. This skull is a significant fossil discovery that offers us a glimpse into earlier human ancestry. While its exact clarification, classification remains debated, it provides valuable insight into human evolution. Details about the specific discoveries are not widely available. It was likely on Earth doing construction work in a gravel pit. It was found, as earlier on indicated, in Germany, and this cow dates to the Middle Pleistocene epoch, approximately 350,000 years old. The skull was found alongside the remains of extinct animals like elephants and rhinoceros. This suggests the individual lived in a specific environment alongside now extinct foreigner. Unfortunately, no tools or artifacts were found in association with this particular skull. In terms of physical characteristics, this cow is not a complete specimen. It's a fossilized cranium, upper part of the skull, with a slightly flattened shape. The bro ridges are less prominent than those of earlier hominins like Homo erectus. The Steinheim skull has an estimated cranial capacity of 1,000 100 cubic centimeters. This suggests an increase in brain size compared to earlier hominins. The back of the skull is rounded, which is a feature more commonly seen in later hominins like the Neanderthals. In terms of taxonomic classification, the exact Classification of this skull is a, it's an ongoing, it's a topic that is still ongoing or a subject that is still ongoing. It is most likely to be accepted as Homo heidelbergensis. In terms of cultural and behavioral aspect, unfortunately, the lack of associated artifacts or tools makes it impossible to draw conclusions about the cultural or behavioral aspect of this particular discovery. 
In terms of significance, this cow falls chronologically between Homo erectus and later European hominins like the Neanderthals. And this helps us to understand evolution within the Homo sapien species. In terms of legacy, as I earlier on indicated, it has, it has been subjected to ongoing scholarly research and debate. And as a result, its legacy and impact can also not be underestimated. My next focus will be on the German discovery Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. This particular di discovery represents a crucial chapter in human evolution history. It was discovered in the Neander Valley, hence the name Neanderthalensis, in Germany around 1856. These remains have since been found across Europe and parts of Asia and the Middle East, and this offers us a comprehensive overview of the distribution level and lifestyle of this particular hominin. In terms of characteristics, Neanderthals displayed robust builds, distinct bro ridges, large noses, and a stocky stature situated for cold climate. Their physical adaptations reflected their ability to thrive in ice age environments. In terms of taxonomic classification, the Neanderthals are classified as a separate species for modern humans, Homo sapiens, but they share a common ancestor. Recent genetic evidence suggests some interbreeding between the Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. In terms of cultural and behavioral aspects, the Neanderthals exhibited sophisticated tool-making skills. They used fire, practiced burial rituals, and created art, indicating a level of cognitive and cultural complexity. They were skilled hunters and gatherers, adapting to diverse environments. It is significant to note how their discovery of fire has impacted the development of early human societies. The potential impact when fire is non-existent are numerous. So for example, the absence of fire will mean that there will be difficulties with food preparation. It means that meat was consumed raw and there was less variety in diet. There's also limited warmth and protection during cold periods where there is absence of fire. There will also be challenges with warding off predators or dangerous, and dangerous animals. Why? Because we notice that fire can be used to ward off predators and dangerous animals. The absence of fire will also mean that there was difficulty or there will be difficulty in tool manufacture and modification that required heat in order to achieve its purpose. So the, 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 the discovery of fire by the Neanderthals is very prominent. In, ter in, terms, of uh, in, in terms of significance, in, 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 in the human evolution history, the Neanderthals are significant when it comes to the evolution of human beings. Why? Because they share a close relationship with modern humans. Studying their anatomy, their behavior, and genetics will provide insight into our shared ancestry. The discovery of Neanderthals have had profound impact on modern history when it comes to the origin of humanity. In fact, this discovery challenges traditional views of human evolution and emphasizes the complexity and diversity of our origins. 
My next discovery will be the discovery in Britain, known as the, squ the Swanscomb Scar. The Swanscomb Scar was discovered in 1935 at the Swanscomb site in Kent in England. It dates back to the Middle Paleolithic period around 400,000 years ago, during the time where early humans inhabited that particular region. In terms of physical characteristics, the Swanscomb skull exhibits typical features of early Homo sapiens, such as a rounded brain case and a reduced bro ridge compared to earlier hominins like the Neanderthals. Its morphology provides insight into the anatomical changes and adaptations in early human populations. In terms of taxonomic classification, the skull is classified within the Homo sapiens lineage, representing an archaic form of our species. Its characteristics contribute to understanding the diversity and evolutionary transitions within the Homo genus. In terms of cultural and behavioral aspect, the skull was found and yielded the site where the skull was found has yielded stone tools and evidence of butchery, suggesting early human activities such as hunting and tool making. These cultural aspects provide clues about the lifestyles and behaviors of early Homo sapiens in Britain. In terms of significance, the skull is significant as one of the earliest known human fossils in Britain contributing to our understanding of early human migrations and adaptations. I will now turn my attention to the France discovery, known as the Cro-Magnon skeletons. The Cro-Magnon skeletons discovered in France are pivotal in an understanding of human prehistory. The Cro-Magnon skeletons were unearthed in 1868 in the Cro-Magnon rock around France dating back approximately 28,000 to 30,000 years ago during the Upper Paleolithic period. These skeletons represent early anatomically modern humans, that is, Homo sapiens sapiens, with features similar to contemporary humans, including high foreheads, rounded skull, and relatively gracile builds. The discovery of the Cro-Magnon skeletons provided crucial evidence for the existence of anatomically made modern humans in Europe during the late Pleistocene era. Then this challenged the previous notions that modern humans originated solely in Africa. The cultural context of the Cro-Magnon skeletons includes sophisticated tool-making abilities, artistic e expressions through cave paintings and carvings, and complex social behaviors, reflecting the cognitive and cultural advancement of early modern humans. The significance of the Cro-Magnon skeletons lies in their role in shaping our understanding of human evolution, migration patterns, and the development of modern human traits and behaviors during the Upper Paleolithic period in Europe. It is interesting to note that Europe has once been considered and it is still being considered as the origin of humanity. What I'll be doing in this particular section of the episode is to debunk this particular claim. Here are some of the reasons why Europe is being considered as the origins and of humanity. And I'll be offering counter arguments in support of the African origin of humanity. One of the major reasons that has been given as basis to concluding that Europe 
is the origin of humanity is the fossil discoveries. So the fossil discoveries in Bulgaria, in Greece, in France are all reasons why Europe has been considered as the origin of humanity. My counter argument is that is that when you consider the argument that has been put forth, especially when it comes to the discoveries in Bulgaria and Greece, the weaknesses embedded in that argument does not support the claim that Europe is the origin of humanity. So, for example, when you pick the claim that the jawbone fossil has human characteristics because the canine root is short and the premolar roots are simplified and partly fused, you'll be getting the argument wrong. Problems with this particular claim is that scientists have observed first, some earlier hominins did not have fused teeth, but some later ones did. The discrepancy suggests that fused tooths may have evolved independently in several different lineages. The second is the claim that the canine root reduction indicates a hominin status. It's unconvincing. After all, only one canine root was studied. Also, the root alone, without the crown, provides no adequate context for drawing conclusions about the entire tooth, let alone about the entire species. These observations and the fact that it cannot be known that the species in question is bipedal cast serious doubts on the claim that a, a 7.1 million year old fossil from Greece is the oldest known hominin ancestor. The last but not the least is that researchers could not, they could not prove the certainty that the loose tooth found in Bulgaria was a member of the species Grycopithecus frebagi or some other known hominin species. So the argument that Europe can probably be the origin of humanity is flawed based on this counter argument. The next reason that has been given by scholars as basis to concluding that Europe was the origin of humanity is the cultural complexity. Europe is rich in archaeological sites with evidence of a sophisticated tool-making artistic expression and a complex social behavior. These cultural aspects suggest an advanced cognitive abilities and social structures among ancient human populations. My counter argument is that Africa is home to some of the earliest known archaeological sites. The cultural continuity and the diversity observed in African archaeological records support the argument that Africa is central when it comes to the origin of humanity and human evolution. Scholars also offer genetic diversity argument. And the main claim is that studies of ancient DNA from the European fossils have contributed to the understanding of human genetic diversity and evolutionary relationships. Genetic analysis have revealed groundbreaking knowledge of some possible interbreeding between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. My counter argument is that genetic studies of modern human population consistently show higher genetic diversity and a deep genetic lineage in African population compared to populations outside Africa. The genetic diversity supports the idea 
of Africa as the original homeland of modern humans with subsequent migrations leading to the global distribution of human populations. The next argument that scholars have given in support that Europe is the origin of humanity is the geographical significance, the geographical significance. They posit that Europe's geographic position with diverse environments ranging from temperate forest to ice age tundra provided challenges and opportunities for early humans to adapt and thrive. This environmental diversity may have played a role in shaping human evolution. My counter argument is that the geographical proximity of Africa to other continents coupled with the evidence of early human migrations out of Africa supports the idea that Africa is the origin of humanity. The ease of migration through the Arabian Peninsula to Eurasia further supports the argument that Africa is the origin of humanity. The last argument I'd like to pay attention to as basis for some scholars to conclude that Europe is the origin of humanity is the scientific inquiry. They posit that early scientific theories and interpretations influenced by European discoveries and researchers propose that Europe was a potential center for human origins. And these ideas have evolved over time with new discoveries and interdisciplinary research. My counter argument is that the overwhelming consensus among researchers is that Africa is the origin of humanity. This consensus is based on a comprehensive body of evidence, including fossil discoveries, genetic studies, and archaeological findings, all pointing to Africa as the origin of modern humans. In my subsequent submissions, I'll be looking at the African discoveries. And I begin with Lucy. Lucy, formerly known as Australopithecus afarensis, is a significant fossil discovery that contributes immensely to our understanding of human evolution. Lucy was discovered in 1974 by the paleontologist Donald Johansen and his team in the Afar region of Ethiopia. The discovery site Hada has yielded numerous hominin fossils and is recognized as a crucial area for studying human evolution. In terms of physical characteristics, Lucy represents an early hominin species with a mixture of ape-like and human-like features. She had a small brain case, a prognathetic face, and a long arm typical of ab abnormal ab adaptation, yet her pelvis and leg bones indicate bipedal locomotion, a key human trait. In terms of taxonomic classification, Lucy belongs to the species Australopithecus afarensis, a significant transitional form between early ape-like hominins and later more human-like species. Her discovery has helped to bridge the gap between apes and human beings. While Lucy's fossil does not provide direct evidence of cultural or behavioral aspect, her skeletal features suggest adaptations for both tree climbing and bipedal walking. This indicates a complex lifestyle involving both, ab both ab arboreal and terrestrial activities. 
Lucy's discovery is pivotal in understanding the emergence of bipedalism and upright walking in early human hominins. Her skeleton provides crucial insight into the anatomical changes associated with human evolution. The next African discovery I'll be looking at is the Lytoli footprints. The Lytoli footprints discovered in Tanzania is a very significant discovery in our quest to identify the origins of humanity and the evolution of the human species. It provides remarkable insight into ancient hominin locomotion and behavior. The Latoli footprints were discovered in 1978 at a site near Latoli around northern Tanzania by the archaeology Mary Leakey and her team. These footprints are preserved or were preserved in volcanic ash deposits dating back approximately 3.6 million years, making them some of the oldest evidence of hominin activity. The footprints reveal bipedalism with features indicating upright walking and weight bearing on the soles of the feet. They show the presence of axe and toes element characteristic of modern human foot anatomy and this suggests an advanced locomotion. The Lytoli footprint discovery sparked renewed interest in bipedalism. Bipedalism allows for more efficient long distance travel compared to the quadrupolism of other species and this enabled early human beings to explore new environment, hunt, gather food and migrate to different regions. Walking upright freed the hands for two use, carrying objects, manipulating the environment and engaging in complex tasks such as tool making and which contributed to cultural and technological advancement. Bipedalism is energetically efficient, re requiring less energy expenditure than quadruple locomotion, which likely provided evolutionary advantage in terms of survival and resource acqu acquisition. The shift to bipedalism is believed to have influenced brain evolution, leading to the development of larger brains and cognitive abilities associated with problem-solving, social interaction, and tool use. Bipedalism allowed early humans to adapt to diverse environments, including grasslands, savanna, and forests, and this expanded the ecological niche of the species of the human species and to some extent resilience so bipedalism played a very important role in human evolution by facilitating efficient locomotion freeing the hands from manipulation and the use of tool and conserving energy and this influenced brain development and enabled adaptation in diverse environment and this ultimately contributed to the success and survival of early human species. The footprints of located or that was that was found in Latoli are attributed to the Australopithecus afarensis, the same species to which Lucy belongs. This classification is based on the size and shape of the footprints aligning with known Australopithecus afarensis skeletal remains found in the region. While the footprints themselves do not provide direct evidence of cultural or behavioral aspects, 
they do indicate social behavior and group dynamics. The presence of multiple individual footprints, including adults and juveniles, suggests group travel and potential corporate behavior. The Lytoli footprints are crucial in our understanding of the evolution of bipedalism. The next African discovery I'll be looking at is Australopithecus robustus. Australopithecus robustus is a significant discovery when it comes to the origins of humanity. It was discovered in Southern Africa, particularly at sites like Swatkrans and Kromdrai. These discoveries date back to around 1.8 to 1.2 million years ago, representing a crucial period in hominin evolution. Robustus is characterized by its robust cranial features including a prominent crest, large molars, and thick enamel. These physical traits suggest adaptations for heavy chewing and diet like that include tough plant material. Robustus is classified as a robust Australopithecine with a genus Australopithecus. It is part of the broader Australopithecus lineage which includes other species like Australopithecus africanus and afarensis. The behavioral aspect of this particular discovery is inferred from its cranial morphology, particularly the robust jaws, the teeth, that indicates specialized diet and dietary adaptation. It likely engaged in heavy chewing and processing of tough, tough foods, possibly including fibrous plant materials and possibly small amount of animal protein. My next discovery is Australopithecus africanus. These particular fossils were first discovered in South Africa in the early 20th centuries, particularly at sites like Twang and Stefontein. Stefontein. These discoveries date back to around 2 to 3 million years ago. Africanus exhibit a combination of ape-like and human-like features, including a small brain case, projecting face, and bipedal adaptation in the lower limbs. These physical traits suggest a transitional form between early ape-like human hominins and later more human-like species. Africanus is classified as an early hominin species with the genus Australopithecus. Its classification is based on the cranial and postcranial fossil remains, which do demonstrates a mixture of primitive and deprived features compared to earlier hominins. While direct evidence of cultural or behavioral aspect is limited, Africanus likely exhibit some level of two use or cooperative behaviors. My next African fossil discovery is Homo habilis. Fossils of Homo habilis were first discovered in the Oduvia Gorge in Tanzania and the East Tekena region in Kenya around the 1960s and the 1970s. These discoveries date back to approximately 2.3 to 1.4 million years ago, representing a significant period in hominin evolution. Homo habilis exhibits a combination of ape-like and human-like features, with a larger brain size compared to earlier hominins. 
It also shows evidence of tool use, as indicated by stone tools found in association with Homo habilis fossils. Homo habilis is classified as an early member of the genus Homo, representing a transitional species between Australopithecus and later Homo sapiens species. Its classification is based on cranial and postcranial fossil remains, which demonstrate a mixture of primitive and derived features. The existence of tone tools associated with Homo habilis suggests a level of technological advancement and tool making abilities. This indicates a shift from a more complex social behavior, including tool use for hunting, scavenging, and processing food. Homo habilis is an important discovery that sheds light on the origin of humanity and the African origin of humanity. Homo erectus is our next African discovery. It is important to note that Homo erectus were first discovered in Java in Indonesia. But subsequent discoveries in Africa, particularly in sites like Tekana Basin and Oduvai Gorge, have provided further insight into this particular species. Homo erectus lived approximately 1.9 million years to 70,000 years ago, making it one of the longest surviving hominin species. Homo erectus is characterized by its upright posture, large brain size compared to earlier hominins, and reduced sexual deformism. They had a robust build, adapt for long distances, travel and hunt with evidence of two use and cultural complexity. Another interesting characteristic of the Homo erectus is that they had better chances of survival as compared to previous hominin species. According to some scholars, the large brain size compared to previous hominids was a contributing factor why they were able to survive better than previous hominin species. The evidence of two use is also a contributing factor why the Homo erectus is believed to have had better survival as compared to previous hominin, hominid species. Adaptability is also an interesting argument that scholars offer in support to the claim that Homo erectus had a better survival hazard, a survival ability as compared to previous hominid species. Why? Because there was the first appearance of Homo erectus in Eastern Africa, and this coincided with the extinction of Austral Australopithecines. And as a result, scholars are of the view that the adaptability of the Homo erectus was a contributing factor to its surviving better than previous hominid species. Based on the foregoing discussion, there is no denying the fact that we can conclusively say that Africa is the origin of humanity. Why? Because when we look at all the fossil discoveries in relation to the origins of humanity, the oldest fossil and the fossil that shares a lot of characteristic with the human species was discovered in Africa. But this conclusion may be tentative. Why? Because if another discovery is made elsewhere, outside Africa, 
And that discovery predates what was discovered in Africa. And that discovery shares a lot of characteristic with the human species. Then that new place will become the origin of humanity. But until then, based on the overwhelming evidence, Africa is the origin of humanity. Finally, we have drawn the curtains to a close on Africa and the origins of humanity. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel, ring the notification bell, and join the community of history enthusiasts. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice day.